sleepapnea.org presents Portraits, Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Richard Bren. Rich, when did you know that something was wrong with your sleep? I've had an awareness of sleep problems my whole life, and my father was the first in our family to officially be diagnosed and begin treatment, and then I had a sister that likewise. Later on, I realized how bad my snoring was. I was that guy who would wake up alone. My wife would be in another room. The only way that I was obtaining any sleep was to be sitting out on the couch myself, propped up. So a night of sleep could be two to four hours, and then I would have the horrible headaches and, and take my day and try to uh, get myself going from that point forward. So I, I knew it was coming and it took me a while though. It took me a couple different attempts to finally be confirmed to have it and be able to get a CPAP and start treating for it. When did you know it was time to do something? Was there a moment where it really hit me? I can't remember if it was the extreme high blood pressure episode that took me in. And, and where that was in conjunction with that, but I knew it and I had been trying to get it diagnosed so that I could do something with it. But the immediate uh, attempts, my first attempts up in Iowa were inconclusive and I, I moved to Arizona and the problem just got worse. And one day I was uh, extremely red in the face and I went in to only find out that my blood pressure was extreme. So I went on a hypertension medicine at that point in time, talking to my MD. He agreed that with my family heritage, it was time to go in and do a sleep test. So I did another one of those, finally diagnosed, finally began treating. Did the notion of using a CPAP machine concern you? Was the CPAP machine uh, of, of concern? No, it wasn't, because I already had a father that was using one and a sister that was using one, and I was becoming more and more aware of it. So when they... Uh, put me on the machine that night of my test and I woke up feeling awkward because I was rested. I didn't, I didn't realize what that feeling was. It had been so long since I'd really uh, experienced that. And so when I finally got my machine and put it on that first night, I knew what the mask, I knew, I knew the way it was going to work. And my wife didn't sleep well that night because I was. She thought I was dead. I was finally resting. So as far as I go, you know, I, I've, I've been a patient that uses it. I've changed some masks. I've learned some different things. I'm, I can still have my jaw fall open, but I'm becoming more and more aware. I, I now do other things using my Apple Watch, my Fitbit, trying to track it. I've lost 40 pounds in the last year and a half, and I know I have 25 more to go. All these things help, but there's so many factors that you do to yourself that you have to realize, you know, how can I sleep better? And that's one of the things that... If I'm going to extend my life, I have to do that. Talk about compliance and why it's important. The importance of compliance to me was never a question. I, I knew that I had the problem. So as far as I was concerned, I was going to find a way. I know a lot of people struggle with it. Uh, my father at times would rip his mask off, you know, felt like, you know, he, he was choking. So maybe he wasn't, you know, titrated correctly or whatever the right medical terms are. It was really never, it's really never been an issue for me. I know now that I have an allergy problem and I, and I use a Neomed type saline rinse. I take, you know, medicines to try to deal with my allergies. So I, I can kind of tell when I'm getting out of kilter right now, when I'm off balance and I have to do something so that I can recover and get back into a, a more uh, appropriate sleep routine again. In what ways has CPAP therapy changed your life? Getting the CPAP machine didn't make a huge difference. To just get up in the morning without a severe headache, without taking aspirin, you know, you're, you're so oxygen deprived that you're in this stupor, you know, so it takes longer to get going. It's not just a cup of coffee, you know, it's, it's taking time for your oxygen levels to come back up so that you can start thinking clearly. So that scares me. I've done commercial insurance and I know there's a lot of problems inherent to truck drivers and other things. I'm on the roadways and I, I know that the person in the car next to me likewise could be sleep deprived. So I, I, I'm in that space seeing the outcomes and they're horrible. So as far as I was concerned, I could immediately tell it, like I said, that first night after having done the test, it, I felt different and I didn't know what that was. And that was your body finally feeling somewhat rested 
and not being in a fog. And what's it like to be alert when you wake up? So as far as I was concerned, you know, those things began to immediately have a great benefit to me. And there's so many other mood factors that, that, that you overcome. You know, you're, you're being short-tempered and your, your inability to focus. And so I worked extended days really overcoming some of my, my mental health, let's just say, inability to be strong and to have strong acuity during the day. So you try to make up for it. So all those things just compound to each up. Rich, what are some benefits of attending the Awake Together Summit? The benefits of this conference are the fact that you have so many experts in this field, and this is such a complex problem, that to, to hear and realize these are things that I never realized, and yet they do impact me. So to hear it and see it and know that there's so many other patients that have come in from different angles, that, that it's quite awesome to see the fact that we're all seeking the best. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.